his great hands has provided. Even when we don't deserve it, he still pour out on us. What a great God. What a faithful and loving God. What a God of mercy. What a patient God. Somebody worship him one more time. Hallelujah, Lord, you're indeed wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So at this time, we'll be having the first lesson coming to us. From, okay, I skipped over the prayer. Well, we're going to pray together. Amen. Let's unite our voices together in prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Lord Jesus, Master of the universe, our great God, our healer, our miracle worker, our provider, we thank you this morning as we come to celebrate the life of your son. I pray you breathe upon this funeral service. Let all things be done decently and in order that your great name will be glorified. Hallelujah. Breathe upon the persons who will be taking part today, the messenger. Let we give you thanks, Lord, for what you're doing and what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Everybody say, in Jesus' name. Yes, yeah, so now we'll have the first lesson, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, 1 to 12, and it will be read by Tanya Paisley, Gabriel Good morning. We're actually doing the second lesson first, so we're taking it from 1 Corinthians, verse 15, verses 50 to 58. Chapter 15, verses 50 to 58. Now this day I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal put on immortal, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. The word is clear, amen? And after this life, there is another, amen? At this time, we'll have selection by Lewin Riley, nephew, Loxy Graham, follow in order. And after that, we'll have the first lesson if those persons are here. Any of these persons are here for the selection? Praise 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord one more time. Thank you, Jesus. This morning, as we stood here today, we're here to grieve and celebrate the passing of our brother. But sometimes when we have grievance and the brother pass by, we might say, why? But if you read the Bible, you will see that Jesus and the disciples was walking. And while he was walking, there came upon a man that was blind from birth. And the question was asked, was this man sin or his parents sin why he was born blind? And Jesus answered, said, neither of them, neither of them is to glorify God. So my brother laying the castle today, you wonder why, and you said him probably mourning and saying why, but it's to glorify God. Praise God. Today I'm here to minister a song, and uh, it's a well-known song, and you could um, sing it with me, or if you don't know it, just worship me. Praise God. Just suppose God search all of heaven couldn't find one willing to be a supreme sacrifice that was needed to buy eternal life for you and me. Had it not been for a place called Mogadore, For a man called Jesus, and forever my soul would be lost. I'm so glad he was willing to drink their bitter cup. Lord, he prayed, Father, let this cup pass for me. I'm so glad he did not call heaven's angel from my head's those days that torments me. Had it not been for a place called Mount Calvary. Had it not been for the whole world it was. Oh, hallelujah! Had it not Yeah. 
had it not been for a man called Jesus, then forever to 12 to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven a time to be born and a time to die a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted a time to kill and a time to heal a time to break down and a time to build up a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from, refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to show, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time to war and a time of peace. What profit had he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to to be exercised in it. He had made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he had set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. I know that there is no good in them but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life. Here ended the reading of God's holy word. We honor it by saying, Thank you, Jesus. Oh, what a wonderful thing, a very wonderful thing to be free from sin and of Christ within, to be made a joint here with Jesus.
good good morning. I'm not sure if it's afternoon yet. It's morning or afternoon. Whichever. Good morning. I would like on behalf of the Christie family to extend sincere condolences to the entire Forbes family. And I know that that's a big family. On the passing of your dearly beloved Sid, I know his sudden departure hurts badly. As I know, some of us might not even yet come to grips with his passing. But there is a reminder in the midst of life, we are in death. Sid George Forbes. Remembering Sid as we grew up in Prairie was that he was famous for throwing stones, which sometimes got him into serious trouble. And if my memory serves me right, Sid was not one who would back down from a sight. Those were the days when fist fight was the order of the day, not like today. As a matter of fact, it, it was fun sometimes to watch some of the fights. Sid and I became co-workers when, in 1976, I joined the staff of the Civil Industrial Training Center at Seville as the secretary and the office manager. Here, he was already working as the janitor. I remembered him meeting and greeting me with a broad smile and then proceeded to take me to, me to meet Mr. Chisholm, the carpentry instructor in his classroom. And the older one, ones of us will know Mr. Chisholm and family was living right up the top at Middle Street there. And had, a, had his workshop over by uh, Mr. Redway. They had, right. So I think um, Sid felt elated to know that he had Mr. Chisholm there already, and here I am coming. So he felt good to know that he had persons in the, the, the top of the organization. I knew him as Sid then, but it was here I got a new name, Barbas. Not sure if that's where he got it, but all staff members and trainees referred to him as Barabbas, and so I followed suit. He was very respectful, and so gained the respect of both staff and trainees. Among, among his many attributes were being dependable. You could depend on him. He was trustworthy and was punctual, was always at his job before the prescribed time. He was a hard and dedicated worker who gave sterling service and sometimes even go beyond the call of duty. We became very good friends, very good friends. He called me mother, and so sometimes he would say, Mother, because of you make me do this, or because of you make me do that. Thank you very much was my response. I don't think it's only because of me, but it's to, it is within you to do work and to see that the work is done properly, and you could depend on him for that. Anything he wanted to be cleared up, anything he did not understand, 
he was never afraid to check mother, whether for advice or opinion. During my sojourn as a representational um, politician, Sid would always say, mother may have your back. I may have your head back, especially. So you know what that meant. That um, whoever it is have to be very careful when they approach me. Sid was always quick with a smile and was kind of easygoing, but could be a force to be reckoned with if the occasion arose especially if it was something to do with his family. He was a family man. He loved his family unconditionally. And I think they all loved him. He was ever so proud of Shadeen and Lincoln, his children. He loved them dearly. His grandchildren also took pride of place, but grandson Chadwick was the apple of his eyes, and the others knew it, so there was no jealousy. In introducing Chadwick to me some time ago, he said, Mother, I me grow him in and I feel me this one, and him now left me. He was in Montego Bay with him, and when he moved up to Seville, played an integral part in helping to establish the farm he had. Whenever there were documents to be signed, I would see Chadwick coming. Now, there were no farewell words spoken. There was no time to say goodbye. He was gone before we all knew it, and only God knows why. Let me encourage the family to continue to stick together. May his soul rest in peace. Deputy Mayor, Dallas Dickinson, is he here yet? Shadeen Forbes, daughter, followed by Tashana. I must say, I am, I was blessed to have a father like mine. Unfortunately, I was waiting on my brother to reach to Lincoln, but Lincoln stuck up in traffic. So I have to do it by myself. My father was a father. Nothing I say today, <laughs> my father was a father <laughs> to me. 
journey, not just for to me and Lincoln. It was a he was a father of many. Where I cannot express how much I miss my father. <laughs> Sometimes I ask myself why now when I need him the most. But God knew best. And each day I said to myself, I'm not going to question God. Because he has blessed me so many times. Over and over and over again. It's not easy to say goodbye to my first love. But... I have to say goodbye to my father. Most of all, I know that my father is not here with me now. But I'm, I'm forever grateful for what he done for my son Chadwick and my daughter. It's not easy. morning when I was sweeping outside and I see a white car stop when somebody come out this was my brother after so many years you know how I feel this morning to see my brother come out and greet me I said my sister be there <laughs> One thing I promised my father that I would be the person he want me to be and continue with his legacy. Amen. <laughs> Love you, Daddy. Amen. Tashana here. By the rivers of Babylon, where we sat down, here we wept when we remembered Zion. Many tears we cried since your passing, but you are and will forever be in my heart. We had good times and bad times, but the love was still strong. I can recall the days I had to journey to Mobe to drop off stuff for you. Never returning home empty-handed, the joy I felt seeing you. You just, you just, seeing you just for a little while. The holidays I spent by you, I only wish I could turn back the hands of time. I felt special, well-loved, and treated like the princess I am. Even though I gave in to mischief, at times, you showed me love just the same. You cherish your children, grandchildren, family meant a lot to you. As you were always there for everyone, I won't question the Almighty. As he always takes the best, I'm sure you made it on his list, just like the rest. Sleep on, take your rest in the garden prepared for you best. Although you're leaving, cause pain and grief. It is well, so, will not, so we will not grieve. It's hard, but I will dry my eyes, hung on to the memories from the way back when, the joy and laughter, your smile will forever be embedded in my heart. Love you, grandfather, to the very end. Thank you. 
Bless the Lord. We give God thanks for a good father. For these days you don't hear most children talking about daddy. They're more so talking about mommy. And daddy is nowhere to be found. But he played his role well. Could we put our hands together? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. The person that was not present for the selection, if you're here now, could you come? Just tell us your name so we know. Oh, Mr. Llewellyn? Okay, go ahead. Good day to everyone. Family, well wishers, friends. I just need to make a selection for my uncle. This man ever, anytime he see me, want, to, want me to not leave you. But me and him tight, same way. I wouldn't mind if you can uh, help me in doing this song. If I'm strong enough, I'll try it. Lord, I'm tired and I'm weary, but I must go alone till the Lord come and call, call me away. Oh, yes. And the morning so bright Where the lamp is a light And the night, night is as quiet As the sea yes. There will be peace in the valley For me someday There'll be peace in the valley for me dear Lord I pray there is no sadness no sorrow no trouble trouble I see there'll be peace in the valley
Praise God. Somebody shout a praise in the house. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your people. And as they give back a portion of that which you have blessed them with, I pray you bless them and multiply it. And that this offering will be used for the furtherance of this great gospel. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord's my shepherd, I not want. He makes me down to lie. In pastor's green, he leadeth me. The quiet waters He leads. And he's still talking 
which is me. He lives. Oh my God, he lives. I know that my Redeemer lives. He lives. Somebody shout a hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. So at this time we will have the eulogy and it will be done by David U. King. Good afternoon. Welcome friends and family members. I want to thank you for being here today. I want to thank you for being here today as we gather together, not to mourn, but to celebrate the life of a great human being, Sid George Forbes. Sid was born May 16, 1951. He was the fourth child to parents Leslie and Ivy Forbes in Priory St. Anne. He attended Priory Primary School, later Alpha Boy School in Kingston. Now, if you know Alpha, you know it was for the unruly. But knowing my uncle, I would say he was just misunderstood. Many instances, he would run away and come home just to be taken back to run away and come home again. He worked as a janitor and a construction worker. He enjoyed farming, rearing animals, and spending time with his family, his children, his grandchildren, great-grandchildren. While working in St. Mary, he met Lorraine Clark, with whom he later moved to Montego Bay and got married. He worked at pre-mix cement factory until retirement. Even in retirement, he would not stay still. He supervised building the house of a dear friend while still planting and rearing animals. Sid is survived by his two biological children, daughter Shadeen Forbes, son Lincoln Forbes, and adopted son by marriage, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, he was preceded in death by his wife, Lorraine, and the mother of his children, Joy Pinnock, and a son by marriage. It is difficult to stand here and attempt to honor my uncle in words. It is never an easy task to capture someone in a speech as words frequently fall short of capturing someone's true essence. So before doing so, I'm asking everyone here for a moment of silence to remember this man who touched each of our lives in so many ways. We may all know him in a variety of ways, father, grandpa, uncle, brother, cousin, mentor, friend. 
I've been privileged to know him as Uncle Sid, Barabbas, Kefi, Murderer. It is within this context I shall speak from and share the greatness of this man. And if you are like me, there is no single word that comes to mind to describe my uncle. He was real. He was unique. He was a rebel. He lived his life his way. He was someone to look up to, someone to follow, someone to admire, someone to be proud of, someone we all bragged about, someone to learn from, someone to respect, someone to listen to, someone to talk to, most of all, someone who shared everything his wonderful life had to offer. He was an inspiration, a hero. He was a rock that we all leaned on that would never let us down. His strength was quiet and unassuming, always put family first and made sure we were protected no matter what. Lord, you sent your angel to become our angel. Now, could you, now you could have him back until we meet again. Now, if you know my uncle, you know he had unique ways to have conversation. Ours always started with Rastaman. One of his signature statements which makes me smile, and I will certainly miss. In mid-conversations, you will hear, tell me what I know. Now, if you know him, that was not a question. That was a prelude to something he was about to tell you. And even in writing this last night, it made me laugh. I could share some stories, but I won't because his realness might offend some people, but it was real. I took advantage and mirrored his admirable, admirable qualities more than once. Where you think I got my militants? I might cry, but I'm not weak. I love my uncle. I even look like him. Now, these words are directly to my uncle. Can you see? Rastaman, my general, you have taught me that life is short and brutal and that the best ways of dealing with such is to appreciate the simplest things, the small moments of joy, and a glass is halfway full despite the circumstances. These lessons have guided me through the toughest situations. I have taught them to my kids, and God willing, they'll also teach theirs those lessons. I love this man. Uncle Sid, I love you a word without end. I sincerely appreciate you all coming here today to remember my uncle Sid George Forbes. I may not have captured him in ways you know him and I thank you for giving me an opportunity to tell you a bit of how I knew him. I know he would have been honored to know how many people cared enough to attend. Now, for all the kind tributes, Eva Murdoch, Shadeen, Tashana, and everyone here, I thank you on behalf of my uncle. May his soul rest in eternal peace. Praise God. That was good. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. It's good when you can live a good life. You know, you don't have any struggles writing the eulogy. 
praise God. We will be going to the hymn, Nero, My God to Thee. Let's stand. And let's us sing and worship. Nero, my God to Thee. Nero,
turn to God. Thank you, Jesus. And these are some of the songs that we're not singing so often again, but it has so much meaning. And if never a time we need to be drawn nearer to God is now. When we look around in our world, in this little island, Jamaica, and see what is happening, we realize that we need to be drawn nearer to God. Praise the name of the Lord. We have come to a very, very important part of the service, and that's the word of Almighty God. And God has his manservant here with us today, Pastor Barrington Gale, and he will be coming at this time to bring the set the Lord. God bless him in Jesus' name. Can we lift our hands together all over this building? And those who are celebrating with us on the virtu virtual platform, wherever you're located. Praise God. I give God thanks. We give God glory and honor and praise, worship, majesty, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. From On behalf of my family and the Calvary Tabernacle Church family, and of course, Lord Bueller from church family, pastor and members there. Sincere condolence at the passing of your loved one. Praise God. He's really truly missed. And uh, but we give God thanks here today. He's the one who caused us to be here today. He's not alive, he's not hearing us. We're speaking about him, but we're not speaking to him. But it's a good thing that he has brought us here today in this in this manner. It is teaching us how people can come together from near and far and join together as one people. It demonstrates friendship and fellowship and unity. And when we are joined together in unity, we can do tremendous things. May God bless you today as we take a look into the words of God. Thank you, Jesus. In Psalm 19, verse 1. It says the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiworks. Whatever you're sitting on today, whatever, if you should look left or right, up or down, wherever you're walking, the ground you're walking upon. When we step out of our houses this morning, we graze out of bed. We never wondered whether when we step off the bed, where we're going to step on, if we're going to go down or what. And when we came into this place today and we took our seat on the bench, we never checked to see if there were any cracks, legs broken, and so on. We just trust the seats to hold us up. And today we are trusting the Most High God that made us and we'll we just want to love him and serve him in a very special way. And this word I just read a while ago, verse, I just look at it one more time. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament show it is on the world. Another part of the scripture says, so when I consider the heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars. Can we understand? If thou art ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? But we depend upon God here today. Thank you, Jesus. And. Uh, When we consider if the sun should refuse to shine, 
As a matter of fact, if you just shift a little bit in a certain direction, very, I tell you that the whole earth, everything will burn, it's scorched. And if it shifts in another direction, it would freeze. And so we marvel at the God which we serve today. Because we have the galaxies and certain the planets and the different things hurling through space at thousands of miles and they're not coming together, they're not crashing, hitting each other. No, he just ordained those things in order. What a mighty God we serve today. And so we are got to recognize him. Yes, we are got to recognize him today. And there's another scripture in, in Deuteronomy 6 verse 4 which says, brothers and sisters. It's so important. Deuteronomy 6 and verse 4, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord was speaking to his servant, the Lord our God is one Lord. Um, we have so many things today that we put before the one, the true and living God. But there's just one being that we're going to bow to. We're not going to bow to any human being. We're not going to bow to any altar. We're not going to place our sacrifice upon any altar that's not built by God. Because we're not worshipping any idols. We are putting our true faith and confidence in the God that formed us. And that caused us to be here today. And we got up this morning without an alarm clock. We got up. God, he woke us up this morning. He sent us on our way. And so we are got to be thankful. Hear, O children of God, one God. Let us love him and serve him. The scripture says, we should do so. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And it says, and these words, which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. Thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up. Verse 8 says, And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand and they shall be as frontless between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on the, thy gates. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to thee, to give thee great and goodly cities which thou buildest not. This God has provided for us, open up doors for us, make ways for us out of no way. We did not slip a switch and the rain came come upon us, no. We did not have to do that. Thank you, Jesus. We did not have to turn on a switch this morning for the sun to shine. No, we did not, did not have to do any of those things. He has given us houses full of good things which thou fillest not, wells digs which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees which thou plantest not, when thou shalt have eaten and be full, then one thing we should do, beware lest thou forget the Lord. That strengthens us here today. Yes. We can't forget about it. We can't be sidetracked. We can't look to the left nor to the right. We have got to focus upon the God because he has kept us by his power throughout the ages from we were born before, uh, before, before. Until this day. And God never needed this light of the sun or the moon and the stars to show him the way. No. God brought those things into being just for us. Yeah. He cared for us. And so he planned that he would have done these things for us. He allowed the rain to shine upon the just and the unjust. 
He's a God of eternity. From the ages unto the angels, from eternity to, come on, it's God. Thank you, Jesus. But we have to depend on him. We have got to depend on this God. Hallelujah. The silver, the Bible says, the silver is his, the gold is his. The cattle and a thousand hills are his. And he said to his people as he were leading, he said, if I were hungry, I would not have told you. God would not have told us here today. He's a provider. He's a supplier of every need. If, you, if we needed anything to, the, to, to get here today, if we're in deep need, and we did not have anything what would cause us to get here today, we'd not have been here. But it's proven that the God of heaven and earth has provided for us and allowed us to be here today and we have got to give him thanks. We are not going to bow to any image. Hallelujah. The Lord our God is one Lord. We read in the Bible about a man by the name of Solomon. David was his father. And in that time they built temples. They used tabernacles with, the, with tents when they moved from place to place as they worshipped. Moved from here and they set up tabernacles and they moved to another place and so on. But this is the time when Solomon was about to, David was about to build a tabernacle unto God. And he said, he was, David, was, David was a warrior king. He fought many battles and won and overthrew the yokes and that people want to have brought upon God's people. And uh, true is in his leadership, he was a prophet and a king. But because of the, there were so many wars and so many blood, much blood was shed, God told him, I don't want you to build the temple, David, I prefer, I want your son Solomon to build it. A bloody book man. But he loved and served God. And he allowed Solomon to build the temple. But he also gave instructions about the things to be brought in to build the temple. And the people brought in the stuff till, until after a time they have to say, this is enough. We don't need anything else. So giving to God is a good thing. Yeah. Giving our substance to God. Giving our lives to him, our hearts to him. And the treasure is what we never make anything of ourselves. No, everything we use came out of creation. Yes, the very bodies came out of the dust of the earth. Yes, God, and he breathed into us the breath of life and we became a living soul. Oh, that my soul would just magnify your God here today. God would want us to love him and serve him and don't worship any idols. But throughout history, when we read and do research and read the different uh, record. We have seen how men uh, have transgressed and walked out of the presence of God. And if I read this to you, when uh, God took an oath and told his people that I'm going to take you out of Egypt. They have you under bondage, but I'm going to take you out. And the more 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 the people grew and spread. The king of, e of Egypt, the Pharaoh decided that he was going to put them, wear them out, and he, he whipped them to work. And they cried unto God. Sometimes we find ourselves in the situation and we want to get out of them. And we want to say, oh God, why me? But we have got to trust God. Maybe God has a purpose for us. And he's seasoning us for a job, for a task to spread the word all over the world. Thank you, Jesus. And they went through hardship. And God, and the more they cried unto God. Oh, God, church was moved with their crying and brought them out of Egypt. Took them to a, another place that they came to a Red Sea that they couldn't cross over. We ought to be thankful to God instead of, instead of complaining. But the people complained and said, Oh, Moses. You have brought us. Look what you have brought us. Look where you have brought us. The better we had stayed down there in Egypt and eat the onion and the garlic with the taste. Good for us, but the taste. 
They didn't like it and they want something else to eat. They came to the Red Sea and they wanted to stone him instead of being thankful. No sooner that they have got out of Egypt, out of the hand of the taskmasters, out of slavery, and brought them to the Red Sea, they were complaining. But God used them there. And the enemy many was coming after them. And when they looked at the Red Sea, they can't go over. They look left and right, mountains on every side. And the enemy coming towards them, they cursed and they swore. And God used Moses. He said, what, Moses, watch that. What, Moses said, what, should I, what more should I do to these people? Look what you have done for them. He said, what is that in your hand, Moses? A rod. Stretch it across the sea. And it separated and the people went over and dry ground. The enemy felt now that they can come over to. And sooner, sooner they, they were near passing over. And the, the people, those taskmasters stepped out with their horses into the sea. And we know it's history now. Uh, they were drowned and they, we, they watched. Israel watched the dead bodies washed up on the seashore. And so it was time now to go over to Canaan. And brethren, they had to come to a Jordan that was in spade. It was a time of harvest. And so the river, oh God, is overflowed its banks. And when you looked at the water, you wouldn't dare want to put your foot in there. But God gave them the instruction to go over. And they went over into over Jordan. But look at this now. There is this man that took over from Moses by the name of Joshua. Let me read this. Conquering Canaan under the leadership of Joshua, the 12 tribes of Israel formed a confederacy around a common religious commitment to, and covenant relationship to one another and to Jehovah. For the next 200 years, the, the nation existed as a theocracy. That means it was God rule. Having judges to, sit, to serve as its spiritual and civil leaders. leaders. However, it didn't, it, it, the nation degenerated. The morals and the faltering religious devotion during this period brought political disaster and often servitude. And they had to serve other nations. In search for relief, the people demanded the creation of a strong centralized government so that victory over the Philistines and other Canaanite people would be secured. David the second king consolidated the people into a strong nation, extended the borders, but the monarchy reached into its greatest splendor under, the, under, the, under Solomon. Many palaces, public buildings, and magnificent temples at Jerusalem were constructed in a time of unprecedented prosperity. For the nation, however, the seeds of disunity Destruction was sown by Solomon when he turned his heart towards the idols brought into the nation by his many wives. Before his death, discontentment had spread throughout the northern tribes and rumors of rebellion were heard in the palace. Much of the manner in which Jeroboam was leading the people lent itself. There was this king now, it said that he, God anointed him but God divided the 12 tribes into two. And he gave Jeroboam was going to lead the, one of the tribes, Israel, with 10 tribes. But he was pointing his people not to serving God but to worship idols. He, he created, he, it was written that he was the king that caused Israel to sin. Jeroboam. But he was anointed of God and put on a purpose to lead that, that tribe. You know what he did? He committed the sin of compromise. Sacrificing unto calves. Which he had likened to offering upon the altars. Burning incense ordaining holy days. They were certainly similar to the genuine worship of the Jerusalem, of Israel. That's what he, where he pointed his people. By these similarities, the people were deceived into following Jeroboam's 
form of idolatry which became so deeply rooted in the hearts of the people that they continued to support the worship of the calves until the nation was destroyed. We are going to be beware lest we lose our way with God. When the king introduced the worship of the golden calves, he stated, this is what he stated, Behold thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. This, these idols were not some being that all, but had breath of life, could breathe and walk and talk. But he likened these idols as to the God who brought Israel out of Egypt. And we know it was a true and living God. But, but look here. That, but notice one thing. That this phrase that Jeroboam used here, look, and, look back into the Bible. If it's not similar to another one that would have been there before that. When Aaron made the molten golden calf at the foot of Mount Sinai, it was stated then, these be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. That's Exodus 32, 4. Although this idol idolatry was judged se severely by Moses, who burned Aaron's calf in the fire, ground it to powder, that's the thing that they put to, for Israel to worship. If you can burn it with fire, if you can ground it up, you can grind it up to powder and burn it with fire, and it has no, none is of none effect, then that is not God. The God we serve is alive. He can't die. From everlasting to everlasting, the trip of the king, that thou art God. And we only move and have our being because of that God who created us. And Moses threw it up on the water, threw it up on the water, and gave the people the drink. They were severely punished for what they did. It's a seed of thoughtness. It had begun, begun to be sown and to bear evil fruit 500 years later. Look at that version, 500 years later. This fruit would bring not only eternal strife and revolt, but also the destructive fall of a nation that would have lost its identity forever. Seeds of idolatry. We have to root it up today. Because if we allow it, allow it, allow it, if we allow it to grow, it's gonna cause in years to come, they're gonna be mourning and grief. Because it's gonna have, have something to do with that, that connection to God, the one that we would we should love and serve. It is possible for, possible for us to be deceived by the false religious systems of our modern world. So intense is our desire. Listen to this carefully before I close. So intense is our desire that everyone should be saved. That it is easy for us to accept sincerity in place of truth. But you could be, we could be sincerely wrong. We could put forth some argument that could want to prove that this is right, but it is not right. It is false. It is falsehood. While sincerity and humility are, since are desirable characteristics, they will never suffice for salvation. Only the truth can set us free today, brothers and sisters. As incredible as it may have seemed a few years ago, much of the church world have sanctioned and to some extent adopted a worship pattern of the Pentecostal movement, pattern. There's nothing wrong with returning to the type of worship practiced by the early church. But care should also be taken to adopt the doctrine preached and taught by the apostles. We should adopt the doctrine, not just a form of worship. The style of worship is not nearly as vital as a measure of truth upon which the worship is based. So we could be sincerely wrong, 
we, we could be worshipped upon, upon an altar that was not built by God. And we could be trying to offer some sacrifices upon it. Yes, upon an altar that was not built by God. And he won't accept that sort of worship. For, for without truth, worship is at best only an imitation. And at its worst, it is idolatry. The cause of the revolt of the northern tribes at its roots in the idol worship of King Solomon. And we can read it in 1 Kings 11, 9 to 12. The spark that ignited the division was Rehoboam's failure to realize, to re relieve the people of the heaven, 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 of the heaven bur heavy burdens imposed by Solomon. Not only did the division of the kingdom have the sanction of God, but also God chose and anointed Jeroboam to be the king of the northern tribes. Furthermore, the division was accomplished without the trauma of a civil war. But look at this. From this favorable beginning, however, the northern kingdom, known as Israel, was enticed to worship the idols of the golden calves which Jeroboam erected at Bethel and Dan. This fall worship was never eradicated from Israel and it finally brought the judgment of destruction from God. Finally, no. Who would have thought, who would have believed that Solomon who had knelt before God on the hillsides of Gibeon in dedicatory prayer unto the Almighty God, who preferred wisdom over wealth and virtue rather than fame, and who built the most elaborate edifice of worship to that date, would have fallen into sensuality and surrounded himself by idols and alien women. But there was a time when he built the temple and he called the people to prayer. The priest was there to, was there to minister. When, the, the, when he prayed the prayer to God, God accepted the worship. And that the priest could not go into the temple and minister. The people fell down upon the pavement and worshipped God. The glory of God. We have, somehow we have lost the glory. In this day and time, we are going to bring back the glory. Yes. Hallelujah. To pray and seeking after God and worship God in spirit, in truth, in the beauty of holiness. Some of them we are placing our children up on altars. Hallelujah. They didn't know that they are innocent babies. People sell, sold them. People have birthed some children that never, the RDD never recorded their birth. No, they have been sacrificed upon the altars of the heathen. They just root them up and tuck them up in this day and time, brothers and sisters as we worship the one true and living God. Just stand together, brethren. I'm going to hand back to the pastor. Just give glory and honor to God here today. Hallelujah. We are worshiping God and praising God in this sanctuary. What a mighty God we serve. The heavens declare it, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. The sun and the moon and the stars with thou art me. We worship the eternal God. Hallelujah. Underneath of the Bible says, is the everlasting arms. Thank you, Jesus. My God, we should make an, a, 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 a commitment with God here today. Whether we want to do it silently, or we want to lift our hand and say, pray for me, we're going to make a, a covenant with God. He has made a covenant with us. God has sworn to keep us. And that's where we are gathered here today. He has sworn to keep us and to break, to break the, the yoke the Assyrian yoke right across the globe over his people. And that's the demonic yoke. We don't want it. No. We're not going to worship at his altar. Hallelujah. God, let, let the devil know that hallelujah, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. Prayers are being offered at this time. Sister, you want to do this one? 
those persons who are family members and those with a strong desire to love and serve the true God that his blessings might flow upon this nation, upon his people. Glory to God. God bless you. I'm going to ask the family members to sit and the rest of us to stand while we pray for them. And I want you to join in with me in this prayer. Jesus, our Savior and our God, our Lord and our Master, here are your children sitting before you this afternoon. I pray, Lord, that you will touch them individually. And as they have listened to your word, Lord Jesus, that they will not just be hearers of the word, but Lord God Almighty, that they will become doers of the word. Put the word into action, Lord Jesus. Breathe upon them, Lord. You made them in your image and in your own likeness for your own glory to enjoy them. Hallelujah, my God. But many persons today, oh God, have turned away from you. But I pray for this family this afternoon, the family of the Forbes and the extended family. Lord, that you will bind them together and that they will become, if they're not, God conscious. And that there is only one God because you declare it in your word. Hallelujah, the prophet Isaiah declared it. Oh my God, the words were penned. I know not another God. I stretch out the heavens by myself. Oh, hallelujah. All things were created by me and for my glory. Jesus, breathe upon them. Help them to understand that, oh God, while they're alive, that purpose is inside of them. That's why you allow them to be living up until today. Purpose can't die. Help them to fulfill their purpose. And their purpose is to worship you and to serve you as their true and living God. Cover them, Lord, from the wrath of the enemy. Because there are times when they have desire to serve you. But here comes the enemy with his influence. Oh God, and pull them away from you. But I pray, dear God Almighty, that they will come to themselves and will surrender to you, the Lord of glory. Help them to understand the very breath that they're breathing is you, Lord. Hallelujah. Only one life, and so soon it will pass. And it's only what done for you will last. Only what is done for you will be counted in the end. Help them to realize that naked they came in, naked they're going out. So all the things that we labor for under the sun and forget God, they will be of no use at the end of the day. Help them to surrender to you today as we say thanks for hearing and responding in Jesus' name. Everybody say in Jesus' name. Jesus. Hallelujah. Could we all stand now and lift our hands and glorify God? What a great God. What a mighty God. Hallelujah. God of love and compassion. And his arms, his outreach is still outstretched to you. If you can just touch him today, you will never be the same again. Thank you, Jesus. We will go to the recessional hymn. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Praise God. Let's sing. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace in the mansions. Bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place when we all get to heaven. What 
what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. Jesus. We will sing and shout the victory while we walk the pilgrim pathway. Clouds will over spread the sky. But when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sign. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. Let us then be true and faithful, trust in serving every day. Just one glimpse of him in glory will the times of life repay. Oh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. Onward to the prize before us, soon is beauty will behold. Soon the pearly gates will open, we shall tread the streets of gold. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. As we continue to sing the chorus, pastor will go first. Followed by the family members and the rest of the congregation. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Oh, when we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all Sing and shout the victory. 
love. Lord, and as we go to the place of burial, we ask you to come along with us. Lead us, we pray, as we say thanks in Jesus' name. God bless you all. Thanks for coming as we move to the place of burial.